the next case is a 71 years old lady, uh, history of stage one SCC of the esophagus post is of a check to me. And a colonoscopy done for polyp surveillance in July, uh, 1 to cm non granular uh, RST at the mid ascending colon, occupying one three circumferences of the lumen, tattoo placed on the opposite wall of the lesion. Now today, uh, we're going to MBI colonoscopy per CSD. Dr. Taguchi, AJ, hi, Dr. Wallace. Hi. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Uh, first of all, it's my great pleasure to be here uh, this awesome, uh, to attend this awesome workshop. Uh, here you can see a uh, uh, bulb. Here is a the scope is already uh, reached to the cecum. And uh, the region is in the ascending column. I heard that uh, the here you can see whitish protrusion area covered with mucus. So let's see. Here is a region actually. The region is uh, in the ascend middle ascending column. Here is a Bowhim bulb again, and here's a region. So middle ascending column, and colored whitish colored, uh, slightly elevated region. The size is almost mm, I don't know mm, one two three centimeter or more maybe, and the region is covered with the uh, mucus. So. At this moment, I think this region might be a cystic related polyp, uh, adenoma or polyp. I agree. It has the typical features of a serrated adenoma, a sessile serrated adenoma, the yep. mucus cap that's yep. in the right colon. Yes. Uh, it's got wide open pit pattern. Um, uh, the only thing it doesn't have is the lacy vessel surface. Ah, uh, yes, yes, but yes, yes. Uh, it otherwise has the classic features of, uh, yes. of a sessile serrated lesion. Yes. And when if we use NBI, we can see the uh, surface structure in detail. Um, mm, I'm not so... Uh, unfortunately, mm, the surface of the lesion is covered with whitish substance. Probably, I think this is a uh, so-called uh, WOS white yeah. or bug sub substance, and this is a developed by mm, named by Kenshi Yao. Mm -hmm. Kenshi Yao is still not here, but <laughs> uh, this sign is suggesting that the uh, lipid uh, deposit at the epithelium, and sometimes uh, SSAP has such. Uh, such finding, and if uh, it's difficult to see the crypt opening, if we can observe the brownish dots, dilated brownish dots, it means uh, open mm, dilated crypt opening. Yeah. Then uh, we will have more confidence for that this region might be a SSAP. And as Professor Wallace said, uh, sometimes we can see the uh, dilated vessel uh, on the surface of the SSAP, but this region has no such uh, vessels. But anyway, basically, I think this region might be a cystic-serrated adenoma or polyp. And here is the tattooing by the previous endoscopist. And I'm not sure <laughs> SSAP is a good candidate or for S ESD or not, but uh, it will be a good uh, demonstration for showing the technique or, tec or to show our technique. Dr. Uh, Taguchi, I've yep. noticed that you have a string, which uh, perhaps yep. the audience can see at the lower end of the cap. Right. Yep. Do you mind telling us about the string, please? The endoscopy image, uh, you can see a string 
uh, before the plus, uh, before insertion, I inserted the string into the endoscopic channel, and I I inserted totally uh, to the colonoscope, and I pulled up pull up, pull up it from the tip of colonoscope, and now uh, the the other end of string is coming from her anus, and we tied the end, both end. So now a string is uh, making a loop. A giant closed loop. Yes. And so I will use this for uh, traction uh, later. Yes. Anyway, at first we, sh we need to inject uh, some substance, <laughs> hyaluronic acid. So <laughs> when, when do you decide or how do you decide when to perform ESD versus traditional uh, piecemeal EMR? Yes, of course, uh, it's very important point. Uh, if the lesion is suspicious for invasive cancer, uh, we remove the lesion unblock, definitely. So uh, of course, <laughs> it depends on the size also. If the lesion, is, lesion size is larger than two centimeter and if the lesion is suspect, suspicious for cancer, we should do ESD for the lesion. And this lesion is just a sessi serrated adenoma polyp. And um, even in Japan, uh, we are discussing about the indication for this such, such SSAP. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I think even for the SSAP, such large lesion, when we do PSME email, uh, then the uh, risk of for, for polyp residue will be much higher. So hopefully we do unblock resection. So I think that's a good point. Um, uh, there was a recent study uh, from the group at uh, Dartmouth Medical Center in the United yeah. States uh, that showed that the, the risk of incomplete resection was actually highest with sessile serrated lesions. Mm. In fact, sessile serrated lesions had a 30% rate in that study of incomplete mm, resection. I see. So I think uh, I agree with you. We need to have a better technique for removal of these lesions. Uh, as you said, I, I don't think we know yet if ESD or just a wide field EMR mm. uh, is the optimal method. But clearly, we've not done a very good job getting complete removal of such lesions in the past. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Dr. Wallace, so question for you. So if you need to take on a lesion like this, like very flat, for example, type 0 to 8 type of lesion, do you have any special recommendation for the snare if you decide to do an EMR? Yeah, when you do EMR, uh, we do use special snares that are stiffer than your normal snare. It's important for all flat lesions to use a very stiff snare. Fortunately, uh, all of the major companies uh, now make stiff snares. Uh, I think each endoscopist has their own preference for snare. But uh, the key is that it's very stiff, which allows you to push down into the saline cushion um, and get the snare underneath the lesion. But I think uh, ESD, I think you'll be able to, with very skilled hands, the, the outcomes of ESD are clearly uh, better in terms of local recurrence rate um, uh, the major disadvantage of ESD is that it takes longer to do. There's a slightly higher perforation rate, although all of those perforations can be closed uh, with clips. It's extremely rare that perforation requires surgery. Exactly. How about the, uh, what do you think about the underwater EMO? Yeah, Ken Binmuller, um, in, now in San Francisco, uh, has described this underwater technique. Yep. Um, I, I think it's a useful technique in certain circumstances. The, the principle is that the polypoid, even the flat tissue, will f essentially float in the water uh, and se become more separated from the muscle layer so that you don't need to do an injection. So it has the advantage that you eliminate the injection step. Uh, in my view, I, I don't use it so much because I find that even a small amount of bleeding uh, causes the whole field to become red uh, when when you're underwater. So I I don't use it so much, um, mm. except in specific cases, for example, a flat lesion inside a diverticulum. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, or a flat lesion covering the appendiceal orifice. For me, it helps float them out into the lumen. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we, we are very interested in underwater technique. And when we do underwater EMO, we use NBI mm -hmm. during underwater EMO. Then we can observe the uh, clear margin of the lesion. Hmm. Yeah, water itself provides some magnification. Yes, yes, yes. So mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. It uh, gives you a very nice view. And anyway, uh, today I will do ESD. And now, today I'm using uh, Q200 PCF Q260 JI scope. And also, so, uh, and the knife is dual knife, dual J. Dual J has a water jet function. Well, I think um, I agree with you. You can remove this either by EMR or ESD. Mm. I, I think the important message for the audience is is you can do it uh, with a non-invasive lesion. You can use either method. It's uh, yeah. both mm. methods are safe and effective. Mm. Now first, uh, I should make, uh, I should cut the mucosa uh, first for two or three centimeter. And then uh, it's important to make the cutting line more deeper. Then we can have a flap. And I will uh, apply a clip to the, this flap and then I can lift, lift up the lesion. Ah, so We've recently seen a few variations of the ESD technique. The, the original technique of doing the circumferential incision <laughs> followed by the submucosal dissection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've seen more recently the tunnel technique. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have a, a preference for which technique you like? Yes, actually tunnel, tunneling technique is also a promising technique. I think, but uh, uh, now we are using this thread for lesion lifting, and I think uh, it might be better to use such traction method. So we heard in uh, Jacques Devier's lecture this morning that, that all of us are one-handed surgeons, and we're trying to come up with solutions to have a second hand. Yeah. Uh, so your solution is to use the the uh, clip string technique. Yes, yes, or the, yes. The string traction technique. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So now we we make our opening uh, for entrance to the submucosa layer, and now I I try to apply uh, the clip and thread to the region. So you're going to cut the loop cut. here first. Yes. And then, and then you will tie this free end to the clip. Yes, 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 exactly. When you decide the location of placing the clip, you'll obviously be pulling it from the anal side. Yes. So how do you decide then the location to place the clip on the lesion? Um, it's a, okay. Uh, I think the most proximal side. Most proximal side. side is so the, the, the oral side. Oral, uh, no, 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 sorry, uh, anal side. Anal, anal side. side. Anal side. Proximal for colonoscope. Yes. <laughs> and can you see this? Now the clip is open, but the just half of the clip. I'm not sure you are using such clip. Uh, this is not okay. Easy clip. And this, <laughs> the advantage of this clip is cheap in Japan. <laughs> and I tie this thread to the clip. Okay. 
Just a simple knot. Simple, yes, yes, yes. And again, close. And if we pull the another end, yes, just a moment. Okay. I'm pulling the thread, then clip will be pulled. My assistant will pull the line, okay. and I insert the clip. Do you ever have problems with any lacerations from the thread? Uh, you keeping a, just a small amount of tension on the thread? Yeah. Actually, if uh, we insert the chronoscope with make looping, then it is difficult to insert or pulling the thread. But if we put the uh, chronoscope stra in straight, it's not so difficult procedure, I think. So we've seen a couple of uh, papers now describing this technique, and it seems to make the procedure a little bit faster. Is yeah, that yeah. the main advantage, or are there other advantages? Yes. Uh, the biggest advantage is to uh, make procedure faster. And actually, in our hospital, uh, we did uh, we we performed the randomized control trial uh, with with this method and without this method, and we we could decrease okay we could decrease uh, thirty percent of the procedure time. Here's another polyp. <laughs> so, Yoji, uh, while you are trying yep. to, uh, you know, locate the lesion, I lost my uh, my lesion, but here, here you can see the lesion, and uh, I just apply, uh, I I inserted a, the applicator of the clip, and please open. Do you can see the clip with thread, and a little bit. Uh, yeah. Rotate. Okay, thank you. And as I told you, I apply this clip to the anal side of the lesion. Okay. Then now we can have a uh, traction here. I don't need to pull just. Uh, tra Thread so much, it now it just uh, applied. I'm put the thread on the bed, and next I will may I will incise uh, the circumferential of the lesion. Can I have a, a knife? Okay, thank you. Uh, the advantage of your knife, J, is it can inject saline into some mucosa layer. So uh, we don't need to exchange, uh, we don't need to change the devices during the procedure. Dr. Taguchi, I'm, I'm yep. wondering what sort of settings do you use for your ESD? Is there, what is your preference? Uh, about the electrical cutting? For, yeah, yes. the current. Now current I'm setting. using Endocut I uh, Effect 3 and uh, not okay. cut duration 2, cut interval 2. And when I dissect the submucosa layer, I use swift coagulation. Ah, uh, effect two, uh, forty watt. Thank you. It seems that all of the uh, originally we we only.